Dur uh, Durkin. Thank you uh, very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I'd like to begin by congratulating Mr Middleton, firstly on his elevation, if you can call it that, to the Assembly, but more importantly for bringing this extremely important and extremely emotive uh, subject to the floor of this Assembly. Suicide or the problem or scourge of suicide isn't exclusive to our constituency. However, it is one that is extremely pronounced in uh, the, the city of Derry. Suicide is, as I've said, a massive scourge in society today. It takes lives and it breaks lives. I can and will speak from personal experience of the devastation that the suicide brings to a family and the awful repercussions that it has across communities. Those who do lose a loved one to suicide can never have full closure. In the darkness of night or even at random intervals throughout the day, you're haunted by questions, questions to which you will never get answers. Should I have seen something? Could I have done something? Would things have been any different had I said something? We, as legislators, as leaders in our community, need to do all that we can to ensure that more lives are not lost, that more families are not left with these unanswered questions. We can do something, and we must do something. We must ensure that those groups and services working hard and working well on suicide prevention are supported, and that people are made aware of these services. Good work is being done by many organisations within our own constituency, not least Foil Search and Rescue, you have Zest, CAMS, the Samaritans of course, and many others, as well as community-based initiatives such as Sport Against Suicide, for whom I recently participated in a fundraising and awareness raise, raising a charity boxing match. Good work is also being done by the statutory agencies. I, along with my uh, colleague Pat Ramsey, recently met with the Public Health Agency to hear about the initiatives that they are hoping to bring forward aimed at reducing the harrowing suicide rates in our city. But this work needs to be told to the public, and this work needs to be sold to the public, because without doubt the perception is out there that we as a government are not acting, and we're certainly not acting fast enough to, to tackle this awful blight. There is a groundswell of opinion in Derry around the need for a detox centre. Both other speakers have uh, referred to that, and I think that's a debate that has to take place in public, and we need the health professionals to outline again, to illustrate the services that do exist, how existing services can best be availed of. I think we have to ensure that our agencies, our statutory agencies in particular, are working in a joined up manner. Recently in, in our constituency, a young man was rescued from the foil bridge by the police who just took him home. 24 hours later, he was in the foil. There are serious gaps here that need to be filled, and that can be filled. Uh, Maeve uh, spoke about the need for increased investment in mental health, and of course there is a, a, a massive correlation between unemployment and economic inactivity and poor mental health, and members of this House won't need reminded about the dire economic situation in our constituency. One thing that we can do, we can all do, I'm not putting the onus on the Minister in this regard, this is something that we all have to do, and that's to, to work to tackle the stigma attached, not just to suicide, but to poor mental health. People need to be told, need to be reminded at every opportunity that it's okay to not be okay, and that it's okay to ask for help, and that there are people there that they can ask for help. I'd like to again congratulate Mr Middleton for, for bringing this issue to the, the floor. It's something that I would be keen to work with the Minister on. I do attend regularly the Ministerial Working Group on Suicide, and I think it's something that we all have to, to work together on across departments 
and across parties and across communities. I call Raymond McCartney.